there's, there's a lot there's a lot to be said for for starting late I suppose but yeah so today Davog very very happy to have you on we actually met in the flesh once and I checked it it was the 4th of March 2010 gosh where uh, in Lyon okay March 2010 I was playing in a thing called Celtitudes. I don't know if you remember that festival in Villeurbanne. A guy called um, Didier Voss was the organiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vaguely, um, yeah. I think that night Rory Delaney was playing in a pub. And I'm pretty sure you were there too. It's, it's very likely that I was there. I would have been hanging, because that would have been just when I was starting to check out the music scene and the Irish music scene and getting into playing music myself around that period of time. Well, we decided to call today's WTF Why the Folk. Why the Folk? Now, why the Folk? Now, why the Folk are we here? One of the things that I... You, you'll hate this, because you, you, you're a very modest person, but the, one of the <laughs> things that I admire about you is your authenticity, which is something that I always aspired to. Yeah. Um, but it's like there's no bullshit, basically. You are what you are. You do what uh, you are. Yeah, uh, you yeah, play I the Wild Rover. Where does all that come from? I won't put on an act. Um, gosh, that's a good question. I've never been asked that before. Um, I suppose it, it just comes from keeping it real. Like, you know, I mean, I just, I just, I feel very passionate about what I do uh, since I've kind of discovered, discovered that got the grip of it, I suppose, got the, got the bug. Uh, but I've always loved it. Um, even because I, I started out acting in my early years. So I was, I was, I was a, an aspiring t late teenage actor. You were almost in the, in the and... what was that film that you were almost in? Yeah, I nearly got the commitments, man. I That's nearly the got the commitments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, it was, it, I won't say it was because of the commitments, but it was a period of time in Dublin where it was bloody hard as an unemployed actor. Right. And, and immigration was a big thing. And if summer, summertime was coming, and I fell in love with a German girl, and I said, fuck her, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And we talked about this before because I was in Germany in '91. I actually saw Christy Moore in Gießen in 1991. Oh gosh! Yes. Um, when when were you out there? Just before? Just after? I, I moved to Germany. I moved to Berlin in 1989, just after the wall came down. Right. Just after the wall came down, I lived in Germany. I lived in Berlin. I had a great, I had a great time in Germany, man. Uh, I, I was in my early twenties. The whole of Berlin was in party mode because the wall had just come down and they were all, all the cousins were getting to see each other and all the families were coming across border with there's no border anymore, there's no wall, we can do what we like, like, you know. It, it was, was very punk, wasn't it, Berlin at that dude, time? Dude, it was unreal. And that's where techno music started. And of course, I went straight in head first into that, taking the fucking, having, having the crack, like, you know. <laughs> How do we go from techno to doing what you're doing today? Your last <laughs> album, Come to the Path, it's very brave, spoken word. Yeah, I'm surprised. I I got it, listened to it, and uh, I remember listening to it and, and think and, and thinking, he's probably going to sing in the next one. But then I got I got the the idea and the vibe of what was going on. But very interesting. Yeah, it's it comes not, to, not comes to the path. It's really it, it it became a COVID project, really, you know, because because we were sitting around like fuck, what are we doing? 